Welcome to the BPD Bunch. I'm your host, Sani, and today I am here with Katya, Jack, Hakja, Lena, and Georgette. We're continuing our conversation on impulsivity and money with regards to BPD. If this or other BPD related topics interest you, please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so that you do not miss a single episode. Last time we talked about what impulsivity with money looks like for us, and we also shared some of our tips on how to deal with it. And today we want to expand and dive a little bit deeper. So are there specific situations or contexts that activate the urge to spend impulsively? And if so, what are they? And are you able to recognize them in advance? And what do you do about it? I like to say my favorite brand of alcohol is house. (laughs) Whatever the house is. Um, I find that my impulsive behavior really uh, is tied to high stress situations in which I also feel shame. And it's a way to kind of like, I'll dissociate, I'll buy something, maybe it'll help me to feel better. So now I can, I've started really with mindfulness, being mindful, like, oh, I just had a a painful disagreement with somebody. I wonder why I feel like going to the mall, or I wonder why I feel like going to these places. And I've try to, with mindfulness and awareness of the behavior, channel it into like, okay, well, maybe I need to pick an alternative activity. It's not easy because these are like, it's taking my regular, my go-to that I've used for so long, recognizing that that's my unhealthy go-to, even if it's not self-harm, things that people would think of as unhealthy, Um, recognizing that that's the urge I have, and then really working hard to pick something else to do. So, you know, doing yoga, maybe if I have an urge to go um, looking for a piece of art, maybe I need to try and make something myself instead. So it's, for me, it's been mindfulness, awareness of the behavior, and then, and it's not easy. It's very hard to try and like, go around that and channel it into a more healthy way. But I, I have been able to do it, I am proud to say. Yeah, for me, it's changed over the years, actually. Because like Hakja, um, when I was younger, mainly in the military, it was, it was more social. I wanted to be, because I was always, also was the youngest one in my, my social group. So it was always, I want to be like these older people. I got keep, I got keep up with them. They're grown adults. This is how a grown adult supposed to be supposed to act if you know, they can spend this money and not have no problem you know spend you no know, hundred hundred fifty dollars on liquor every night or, or every weekend it's nothing at um at like the older it's become more stress more more that feeling of emptiness trying to identify who I, who I am because I'm, I'm not feeling myself like myself so I'll just go buy stuff that which I feel that whole um now in order when I, when I recognize those i'll go as far as cutting up all my cards like let me cut up my cards put them then put them in, in ice water and, and then put them in the freezer and, and some water and freeze them until i'm feeling better until i know like i'm not about to spend 200 dollars on stuff i don't need let me, let me go to the far extreme as i can to stop my stuff from spending all this money most of my money spending was always tied to like a group and wanting to fit in that group so definitely social situations for me are where I tend to spend the most uh, especially people I don't know people I want to be like people I admire I definitely go and I would spend more now I think I can take a little bit of a step back and still like admire what they do but do it in my own degree where I can do it comfortably you know I don't have to get like um, let's say a uh, Casamigos like tequila bottle I don't need to do that I can get whatever they have that's the cheapest item and I could do that and I'll be happy you know we will all do whatever we need to do and I can um, I guess do like a minimized version of what they're doing and still feel like I'm fitting in quote unquote or when it comes to let's say um clothes and let's say I think someone's like sense of style is so cool and I'm like wow like I need to have those things that they have instead of going and buying everything that they have I 
can now feel like I could step out of that and let's go say to a thrift store and find the same thing or I can get it on sale and coupon and get that same thing you know so I will still have that urge but I can do it to a lesser extent that's still acceptable to me but I can do it to a much lesser like damaging extent than I used to. I think in terms of like what triggers my overspending I think for me definitely um it's been said like when someone rejects me or breaks up with me or something that would be a huge trigger for me because it felt like um okay there's something wrong about me right that people don't like so I can buy something to fix that never worked but that's often the approach I took <laughs> there's always a hope that this time it will work <laughs> You just need to keep buying more things until you find the right thing <laughs> to make it work. Yes, just keep just keep going and get I'll get there at some point. Yeah. So I think for me I've always subconsciously equated possessions with self worth. And I think looking back at how that's developed, I would definitely trace it back to my childhood because I did not grow up in a family where there was disposable income it was very much the type of situation where we didn't really have money and there wasn't anything left over for luxuries it was literally about day-to-day living and anything else on top of that was a bonus but when I was at school because of the problems with bullying the fact that I wasn't in branded sportswear the fact that you know I didn't have branded clothing, designer clothing, that painted a bit of a target on my back. And for me, I always saw material things as a way to fit in with other people and kind of avoid standing out in a crowd. And I think when I had the opportunity to go out and earn my own money, it was very much like, okay, so now I have disposable income. So I am going to buy all of the things that I didn't have when I was younger. And I'm going to indulge that part of my past and that part of my personality. And it was just done to such an extreme extent because in my mind, it was like, do you know what, actually, like I've earned this. I went without when I was younger. So now I'm going to compensate. And it was done just to the extent where you couldn't reason with me. And I think a lot of the problem as well was I did have people around me who enabled that behaviour. So obviously I've spoken before about having people around me with borderline personality disorder that are not necessarily going to tell me to put the brakes on when I am overdoing it, but also family members. So for example, my grandma, when she was alive, was very supportive of this idea of what Jack said you know you don't take it with you and I think that's probably to do with the time of life that she was in so my mum would try and put boundaries in place when I was living at home in terms of buying things and I would then go to my grandma and she would um hide them for me essentially away from my mum so that then enabled me to carry on with that behavior so I think definitely for me it's about feeling like almost like I'm entitled to have nice things because I didn't have them when I was younger are you able to like recognize it or mitigate it in the moment yeah I think it's because I can recognize that it is tied to self-worth and it is definitely those times when I'm lacking in confidence or when something has happened to trigger negative emotions, that actually I've started to separate what has happened with me as a person and actually just have a moment to take a breath and not just go straight into that impulse to buy things because actually I might feel good in the moment, but longer term I now appreciate that there are consequences to my actions. And especially now, those consequences are going to impact people other than me. And it's been a tough learning curve, but it's something that I've had to learn. Like, I just didn't really get responsibility before, but now I do. And actually taking other people into consideration has really helped with that. Yeah, I think my contexts are pretty similar to everything that's been said. I think the only new other one is... I think boredom is a big one for me. I just, like, I don't, I really struggle when I feel bored because it kind of activates the this chronic feeling of emptiness where it's just like, 
And to me, there's just something about that that feels like unless there's chaos happening, I don't feel alive. Um, and so chaos is king. Uh, I think in some ways I'm actually for all of the crap that it brought. I, I, I was actually kind of beneficial the pandemic because I, I had there, I had to get used to spending time by myself and not being able to just go out and be impulsive and that really that helped because I wasn't allowed out right so that helped me to kind of recognize what that urge to just go out and do things felt like and to be able to not have to act on it all the time when I get sort of overcome with this urge to like create chaos it's sort of this antsy feeling and I I know that if I go out I'm in that state I'm much more likely to spend more money than I really should and so it's been helpful to be aware of that and then I you know depending on how intense that feeling is I either will just try to sit with it and do something else or just be really mindful of it when I go out and and ask myself, hey, am I spending money because I just want to create some chaos for myself or is this actually helpful? Thank you everyone so much for watching. We hope you got a nugget of wisdom to take with you on your journey. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so that you do not miss a single episode. Come check us out on Sunday. We have fun brunch episodes, which is a little bit more laid back. We get together with our favorite brunchy beverages to catch up, play games, and talk about all things BPD. And then of course on Wednesday, we'll be back with a brand new episode topic. So we'll see you then. Till next time. Bye. 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 Bye.